find this picture Elizabeth Cable posted. It's an artist, and it's a it's a mermaid, and it reminds me. It's just that beautiful, romantic. You've seen this kind. You you're familiar with this yeah. kind of artwork. I was didn't have a chance. I don't know who the artist was, but I wanted to show it to you. It's very lovely. How they kind of put twinkle lights in it. And yeah. You saw it on Percy phones? Uh, site? No, actually, I don't think it was her site. I think, unless I, it, I was mixed up, my friend Elizabeth Cable. But maybe it was Percy phones and it was just next to Elizabeth Cable. Mm -hmm. And I got it mixed up. Things can disappear so quickly on here. It's weird. No. What you have to do, right, which I keep forgetting, is when you see something you like, click like, so you can come back to you and go up and see your uh, history of what you were looking at. Oh, maybe I did do that. Because yeah. I, I do hit the like button just to acknowledge. If I don't have time to say anything, yeah. just to let people know I've looked and I like it. Yeah. So I, I'll show you how to... Well, go to your history of what, what you clicked on. I'm just going to go and get some salt. Oh, oh. Salad when you can make an entire salad start to finish in I'm just seconds. Fresh fresh <laughs> 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 to release good remnants and then rinse. That's it. The one second slicer complete with the hinge cutting lid and storage container. So anyway, man, this whole thing. insert and fresh keeping lid is yours for just This whole thing with, with a blue, I, you know, I gave a, a blue swim to Nisha last night. I gave it a You blue. did see her? I, can't, I, I drove the... After all? Yeah, yeah. Oh! Well, 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 yeah, why didn't you think I was going to do that? Oh, no, because of her. I saw her briefly on my way to work, and she said her and Tristan were probably not going to go to the art walk. Yeah. Take bet, bet, they bet, were going to go to um, a bet, movie. Bet, bet. And I said, oh, well, maybe you better get in touch with Greg, because he was hoping... Well, no, it all worked out. To get you the bicycle. So great! Yeah, I put the bicycle in the back, a pack of uh, Big Blue. I'm scared to death for some reason. Well, you That know, bike was blue too that you gave her? Yes. Oh. And I, I gave Michael Dunham a blue swim too. <laughs> See, the whole story of. of my big, you know, the, the musical, you know, I wanted to, working on it, written some numbers, you know, it was my big, beautiful uh, blue bicycle. It starts with you, the 17-year-old in Paris, and you, you go over there to you know, live with your sister, and you buy this uh, <laughs> blue swim bicycle, and the owner tells you, you know, it used to belong to Brigitte Bardot. <laughs> so you bring it to the United States, and the whole thing is, you know. That's funny. <laughs> but but what really makes it, uh, I mean, credentials is this whole thing with John Lupton, you know that you know that Rebel set and you know the Beats, you know, and mm -hmm. this movie. I never and, 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 could find that movie. Oh, it's okay. You have to post it by itself. And uh, well, could be, I know what? It's on your site. When I go to your web and download, it go, takes me over to the web, and this doggone thing keeps crashing on me. I got too many pictures on there. It says reload, 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 and then I can yeah. never get through. I think that's what happened. So, because I have so many pictures on there, Marilyn, on my pages. So maybe if I did it on my regular computer, it would be okay? Oh. Maybe yeah. Maybe it's just the phone? Oh, my regular computer's yeah. in the shop right now. My laptop. So anyway, we got this Rudolf Frimmel, who yes. worked on the music for one of the greatest musicals of all time, Rose Marie. Yeah. And and you're telling me that that uh, Joseph Pasternak was involved with, uh, with Rudolf Frimmel in some manner. We'll have to look it up. I did. I, I didn't find it. No, well, maybe they weren't. Yeah. But. They had to know each other because they both came from pretty much the same country. Mm -hmm. 
And I'm sure they did. He was Czechoslovakian, and they both went to Hollywood. Yeah. And they're from the same era, same age. Yeah. And Joe Pasternak started out as a cameraman. Really? Or uh, just, you know, like Jeff said, he had on the ground floor, whatever, you know, get, yeah. got his foot in the door. There were a lot of Jewish producers that, that he got. To know. Yeah. Yeah, he was just a, a little guy nobody. And, and Rudy came over here. I mean, I don't know all of Jeff's father's particular interests before he got here, but according to Jeff, he started on the ground floor. You know, so who knows? I don't know. But um, and, and Jeff's writing a musical. Yeah, he's been writing it for a long time. <laughs> and, and he wanted you to help develop the, the, the heroine, the female heroine. He did at one, one point. Well, well that's important. Since then. You see, see, the object is, is, is to write an article that establishes the Sawtell as, as a bohemian cultural uh, center that nobody knew about. That, that you know, you know. So we got Bluffton and the, you know the Beat Gathering, and you know we got uh, you know uh, Fremel, you know your mother, your mother into the music, uh, your brother marrying uh, uh, Ruthie Fremel, that was her last name, and. And then John Lupton married Diana Fremel. Diana Fremel. And then when when uh, Stanley died, he adopted Anthony Tony. So th so that's a, that's a firmly in your family tree, Marilyn. Yeah. And, and what what do you mean? Yeah. You know? <laughs> by marriage. Huh? For me, it's by marriage through marriage. Yeah, but. Was it was the adoption official adoption? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you know, that's another dog. Actually, if, uh, I, when looking for Tony, the pictures I'll have to show you. He really, there's, you know how the generation. He looks a lot like Rudolph. There is a real, real resemblance. Really? It's funny how the grandchildren and the, he would be his great grandfather. There, I. Kid you not, I'll we'll look it up on I'll okay. show you. You little pig. You sound just like a little pig. No 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 no. Stay down. Stay down. Don't hit the camera. No no more for you. Okay, well I can see a picture of that. Yeah, I'll look Pig, for it. See, 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 ultimately, you know, I'd like to go back to the new Belladier, get the history of Brian and uh David Cosby and you know, how we started there, you know. Uh, how your mother was a Jeanette McDonald. Rosemary Groupie, <laughs> right? Fan. Fan. <laughs> and, you know, and she's taking care of all these kids. Mm -hmm. the, the, now, let's talk a little bit about those kids. Were these kids parents? Did they live in the Sawtell? Or who were these children that your mother... She, she, yeah, they, a lot of, yeah, they did live in West L.A. Yeah, they did because they would. They saw my mom's ad up in the market and responded to it. That's what how my mom. What market? That's how my mother got her business by advertising up on the bulletin board in supermarkets for babysitting child What care. market was there? Safeway, Ralph's. Ralph's Piggly Wiggly up on Westwood. No. I, mean, I don't know if she went that far up. Yeah. I don't know. She depended if she got a ride. Um, Bonds. Bonds. Where Bonds. Where, Bonds. Where was that? I don't know. So a lot of what working people, working women? Single moms. Some, single were, moms. some were married, but most of them weren't. <laughs> most of them weren't. How do you know that? Because I knew the mothers, kind of. You get to know them. And my mother ta tell, would tell me. Oh, they work here, they don't have a husband, or their husband left them, or they're divorced. And um, there was one that I babysat for in high school. Now, that was different. She 
after you and I broke up and I came home from France, I would babysit her. No, actually, I babysat her once when you were with me. God, I remember. And her husband came home and you were laying on my lap or something. And, um... <laughs> laying on your lap? You mean my head was on, on your lap? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's be specific here, Marilyn. You were curled up like a baby on my lap. <laughs> oh, and, um, really? Huh? And, um, she... She was Jewish. Yeah, I remember. And, um... um her husband wasn't, but she took me to my Are first... Are you done with that? There's some more for you. Yeah, no, I've had enough, but I... Uh, I'll... You sure? Just another piece? No, I'm full. Thank you. I'm full. Yeah. And she took me... We went, no, I went no, no, to don't, a... Don't um, get in here. A peace march down in Watts. Who did? Her, this woman. I can't remember her name. Huh? Okay, so... One but of the um, of, of the children. What year was that? Oh, that was that was in the like sixty four. Oh, God, I had so much trouble with this dog. I, I just don't have a... He's fine. No, I know. No, no. the trouble I have, I'm just not used to having an animal in my space, and I was running that through my mind the other oh, day. Oh, yeah. About my dog and stuff. So I've been thinking about getting another dog. So, well, I made some discoveries with, with the story on the movie on uh, Les Miserables. He was, he was titled Monsieur Madeleine, which is Magdalene. And there were these Magdalene sounds. Oh, Monsieur Madeleine? Yeah, oh. that's, that's Magdalene. Madeleine, Madeleine is a man's name in French. Okay, but it's, all, it's also Magdalene. Mm -hmm. The okay. Magdalene is the So they have these Magdalene asylums, okay. And he ends up having a... You know, he saves a prostitute, saves her daughter. They, they go stay in an abbey until she grows up. Well, I think he was aware of Victor Hugo, of the Magdalene Asylums. They were all over Europe. I don't know if they were in French. I haven't found that out yet. Hmm. Where unwed mothers, women having children. You see the connection here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. reformed prostitutes were, you know, could go there and, and live in the nunnery. So here's your mother basically running a private Magdalene asylum. Pretty much. <laughs> That's pretty big, Marilyn. Because Les Miserables was made into a musical also. And that was very popular. My mom watched one little boy, Roger, for a long time. He lived with us pretty much. Mother was more, she foster cared a lot of children. She was more than a babysitter. Yeah. And Roger's mother uh, maybe would come get him on weekends. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And she, at some point, was a dance instructor for. Arthur Murray, I do remember my mother telling me that, I, that she was a dance instructor for Arthur Murray. Uh -huh. And how long she was one, or how often she was one, is something I do not know, because her son lived with us. <laughs> and it had something to do with the night shift. How old was her son? And sleeping in the day. How old was her son? What are you talking about? A grown what? man? A grown man? No, one years old. Oh. Two at the most, and he he was with us all the way over to from Armacost to Iowa. Uh huh. And I think she finally did meet someone, and Roger started going home on a regular basis, mm -hmm. and then.
eventually stopped coming. And um, then there was a young girl, about two years younger than me, Jill. She, we became good friends because she was, you know, just a couple years younger than me. Mm -hmm. And um, her mother was a model. She's the one who took the picture of me in the sea and ski thing, <laughs> holding the, <laughs> me and uh -huh. my friend Michaelin, who I met, because she was new to the neighborhood, and Mom started watching her after school. Her mom preferred her not to be left alone. And um, for a while, till she, her job brought her home earlier or whatever, Michaelin pierced my ears. But I remember Jill's mother, she it lived in these really kind of, it was like an old house turned into apartments, and it was behind us, and it was on the hilly part of the street below us, and it was really run down. Ar Armacost? Around the corner from Armacost, and I could not tell you the name of the street, yeah. but you could like climb over a wire fence from the back of our backyard and get into that backyard. And her mm. mother had one of the bungalows and it was totally run down. Mm. But I remember she was so cool because she knocked out a wall herself mm -hmm. and she painted and it was very bohemian the way she fixed it up. I mean very of uh, 50s, you know, yep. like beatnik. Maybe glass bead partitions, and, that type of thing. Yeah, and the bamboo <laughs> flooring and oh, and I remember the funky bathroom. I just loved it. She painted it bright turquoise blue. It was so cool. I just loved it. I thought it was the prettiest thing I'd ever seen. And then she ended up having a baby ill legitimately. She get, she was got pregnant while my mom was taking care of Jill. Uh -huh. but the baby came to live with us. And it was born premature what? and it was in the hospital. For Before it came to live with you? Yeah, and as soon as it got out of the hospital, it was mom's baby. Mom almost adopted it and then she found someone at the church. It was kind. Of, it was sad because Jill knew, found out her mother wasn't going to keep the baby, and um, it was being adopted. And, and Bill was the. Huh? You mentioned Bill again, a second time. Jill was the sister's. Jill, not Belle. Jill. Jill. Um, And I knew who adopted her, and I couldn't tell her. Was Did your mother keep records? Well, my mother kept in touch with her, the family. and well, I didn't... How did your mother do this? I mean, agencies can't do what your mother did. She had were those kids that were abused and neglected? She had love and, and compassion. She was a good woman. Well, of course, that's what I'm getting at. I mean, she, I mean, I mean, she could have been in it just for the money. No, she was in it more for the, the love, and it was her work. So you, so you're saying it's her, her, her spiritual work, her religious work. Oh, I don't know. Is your mother she a religious person? It, of course, yeah, she was a very religious person, but. She was a very caring person. You know, sometimes these mothers didn't pay for weeks, and then when they did pay, they paid what they could. You know, and it isn't like we were rich. My mom made do. Oh, no, she made do. So. I, mean, I mean, a professional outfit that did this would be racking in hundreds of thousands a year. Today. Yeah. Mary, you, you know, 
I'm really, I'm really glad we're down to this because the, this is, and this is, I mean, I hope you, you know, this is way beyond a bohemian interest or a hobby in my sense. It's more than a hobby. You know, I, I mean, when I met you and walked into your house and saw what was going on, looked at the little children that were out in the, in the porch area, and the little faces looking up at me, you know. I mean, there were like, what, one, one on each side of going, <laughs> the baby's here. And then you go inside and there's babies inside. Well, my mom had, on the average, 8 to 12 children in that little house. She didn't have that many at Armacost because Roger was her main income and he lived with us. So she would, other kids came and mom made some money from that because she needed money. Roger just gave us the house to live in. So that was, but she needed money too. And Roger was Filipino? Yeah. He was and, the Mongoloid he, child that lived with us and his father lived with us who owned the house in exchange for rent. My mother was his caretaker. He called her Mama Ree. <laughs> he was like a stepbrother. He was. He lived with us. He slept with us. He ate with us. <laughs> he was like the family pet. No. <laughs> Roger. I remember tell you telling me about Roger. Yeah, I got one. And he shared a room with you, and he was beating off. Is that on tape? Yeah. <laughs> Meryl, I'm, you know, yes. When he got moved around, he got, sometimes his bed was, his cot was in the living room, sometimes it was on the front porch. He got, he got moved around. Poor guy. Poor us, you know, too. Well, well, yeah, I mean, I mean, that's what I'm, what I'm going to get to. I mean, family dynamics, you know, I mean, I couldn't even get along with my, my daughter, you know. You know what I'm saying? And we're pretty distant. Yeah, you know, we, well, we yeah, didn't grow you, up. We didn't have to, you know. You do have to learn how to get along. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why you probably wonder why I'm the way I am. Because <laughs> we grew up like third world country people live, you know, in small houses. You, you, you grew up in, in, in the scene in Les Miserables. <laughs> All the little street urchins running out. You lived in that. Well, you know, you know, just before the French Revolution. I, I mean, things, I and mean, the whole French Revolution. I mean, can you met my sister? But when, I don't know how she did it, Marilyn. Go ahead. Well, she her she kept I, her identity so intact. It's unbelievable. Because she was subjected to this, right? She, on armor cost. She moved there when she was about 12 years old. So she's almost moving into being a teenager, right? Mm -hmm. So, and then, and there's Stan and I, and, and then shortly my aunt comes with her two teenage daughters, who want is a year younger than Shauna, another one is a year older, so they're all three in the same bedroom. And then next door to them, it's me, my mom, and my aunt in that bedroom. Okay, me, your mom, and your aunt, three women. No, two grown women, two mothers. Uh -huh, and me. And how old were you? Six, five, five. My aunt came to live with us when and, I was... And did you... Wait, wait, hold, hold on. Let me... 